around school before games with her teammates. Valeria's words of wisdom to future Lady Rams is to never give up, ever. Give your all on and off the court. The coach's favorite memory of me was last year after winning the sectional championship game. Me instantly came over and asked Coach Bent if she could cut a piece of the net down for Cadence, who was not able to be in the game because of headaches from a concussion. Valoria Stowers. Elise Swartz is the daughter of Christy and Brian Swartz. She is a two-year letter winner for the Lady Rain basketball team. Elise has also been involved in softball, volleyball, book club, Spanish club, art club, student council, younger professionals, 1X, and the musical. Elise has signed on to play softball for Wilmington College and plans to become an athletic trainer. Her favorite memory is from her freshman year when her Eve, Brooke, Cadence, and Valoria would get Wendy's every game day. Her advice is to have fun in any sport that you play and don't be so hard on yourself and enjoy the time you have in high school. Most importantly, build relationships with all of your teammates. The coach's favorite memory for Elise was seeing her go four and four from the three-point line in the second quarter of the Riverdale game this year. Elise Swartz. We'd also like to recognize Colonel Crawford's Mallory Plesak as this is her senior season. Congratulations to her.
day on the mountaintop for the Upper Sandusky Lady Rams. It's the regular season finale for them and the Colonel Crawford Lady Eagles. Two Northern 10 rivals going at it to finish the regular season. We got the action coming your way on your smartphone, TV, PC, tablet, any smart device you have, and it's coming your way next. than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. The Burkhart Farm Center pregame show for this Northern 10 regular season finale between the Lady Rams of Upper Sandusky and the Lady Eagles of Colonel Crawford. Hello, everybody. My name is Travis Berardi alongside Coach Joe Baylog. And uh, quite the way to finish the regular season between two rivals. Yeah, I mean, both, both teams have had solid regular seasons. Um, and both teams looking to try to finish on a positive note. Uh, to go in the tournament maybe with a little bit of a momentum. Uh, they're both in the Shelby District, and both teams have chosen to take a bye the first the first uh, round. Uh, so they both will be playing in a sectional final uh, a week from today um, to try to advance to the district. So um, exciting basketball on a Saturday afternoon. Absolutely, and let's get right into things with our team spotlights and first take a look at the Lady Eagles of Colonel Crawford High School. 16 and five, eight and five in conference under head coach Zach Bauer. They're the number three seed in that division three Shelby district. And like you said, in one week's time, they'll take on either rival Winford or Firelands Conference champion Western Reserve in a sectional final. This is a team that loves to play defense. I know you're a defensive coach, only giving up 28 points per game. That's pretty darn good, not only in the area, but the state. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, in looking at the stats, I mean, Coach Bowers built his team on one thing that you can be consistent at, and that's playing great defense, and they've done that through the year. Uh, holding teams at 28 points a game is, uh, I don't care what, at what level, that's outstanding defense. So it'll be interesting to see today, um, you know, if they're able to, uh, you know, do that against a very good upper Sandusky team. And they need it too, because they're only averaging on just under 40 points per game, shooting 31% from two, 28% from three, but they do hit their free throws at 62%. And one of the main reasons why they do get that offense as we take a look at our player spotlight. 
and that is one Allison Weifman from the Lady Eagles, averaging 8.5 points per game, two rebounds per game, one, one steal, but another thing that'll make you smile, Coach, she is almost 72% from the free throw line. She does everything. Yeah, I mean, she's she's been the consistent player. I mean, you know, if you just pull out her stats and you look at him, you're not going to be, oh, man, wow. But you kind of go wow with, with how uh, Colonel Crawford plays because they're so defensive-oriented. You know, you're not going to have a lot of great offensive stats. But uh, you're exactly right. The impressive thing is shooting 72% from the line. So if this is a close game, she would be the girl you'd want to have the ball in her hands to be able to get to the free throw and knock down free throws late in the game. And now let's take a look at the team spotlight for this, the home standing Upper Sandusky Lady Rams on senior dander head coach Jerry Vent, 15 and six. They're the Northern 10 runners up 10 and three. They're the number two seed in that Shelby district. And like you said, in a week's time, they'll either take on Willard or be Cyrus at Buckeye Central. You'll see that game live and free on the OH report. They have the offense. They're averaging just under 50 points per game but they're giving up a little bit more than Colonel Crawford, although every team gives up a little bit yeah. more than Colonel Crawford. 38 points per game. However, their offense can cancel that out. They're a very good shooting team also inside the arc. They were at 50% midway through the season. They're up to 54% now. They're shooting over 34% from three, shooting over 60% from the free throw line. But as the season's gotten on, their offense has gotten better. Yeah, I mean, the thing that you look with uh, upper Sandusky, um, and seeing them play earlier in the year, they have good balance. Uh, you know, with, with Isles and Stowers inside, they have good balance. And then on the perimeter, uh, Grace Walton and Abby Newman. Uh, Abby's made 25 threes on the year, I believe, and Grace has made 30. Um, so that inside-outside balance is something that uh, Colonel Crawford's going to have to do a good job of being able to defend. And let's take a look at our player players spotlight as we highlight the three seniors from the Lady Rams. All will be starting today as well. That is the trio of Swartz, Stowers, and Isles combined. They're averaging 21.8 points, 12.4 rebounds, 4.8 assists, 5.5 steals. They have a 44 and 49 career record. However, this is the best season of their careers this year, and it's because of these three seniors. Yeah, I mean, that you know, you look at your seniors and you want your seniors to have a special season. And those three seniors have been through kind of, I guess, what you, we would call as coaches the wars. Um, they've had seasons where they've not been successful. But what it shows you is they've taken that step to really improve each year. And they've had a special senior season, finishing second in the league. But then also, hopefully, you know, their hope is that they're going to make a big tournament run here to make it even more special. And they have the ability to with just the players that they have. You saw in a game live and free that I had last Saturday where they were able to come back from 10 points down to knock off uh, a carry squad in overtime who is also in the top three in the conference. But let's send things down to the floor for the playing of the national anthem by the pep band of Upper Sandusky. Just about ready to go here 
in the Burkhart's Farms pregame. And as you are seeing, the normal, the four super fans from Colonel Crawford, Coach, you've seen them before <laughs> uh, down there, but uh, they're, they're just, they're everywhere. They're at football games, they're at basketball games, they're at softball, baseball, everywhere, everywhere they are, they're here. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think one of the things that, that uh, a lot of these players don't realize until they get out of high school is the great support that they have from fans like that. I mean, we were at Lucas on Monday to do a thing with the Toms, and they talked a lot about how special it was when their community comes out and supports them. And those, you know, those guys have been here for a long time, and it's great to see that kind of support that they give to the Colonel Crawford Eagles. So here are the lineups now for both sides. First, the lineup for the Lady Eagles of Colonel Crawford. Gabby Rostin, Mallory Plesek, Mira Holt, Allison Weithman, and Leanne McKibben. And the starters for the Upper Sandusky Lady Rams. Grace Walton, Leah Kinley, Elise Swartz, Cadence Isles, and Valoria Stowers. As we are just about ready to go here. The final game of the regular season for both sides. What was your, the, going into a senior night game like this, Coach, were, were the emotions a little bit different than a regular regular season game because, you know, the last time you get to see your, your seniors on the home floor for one, you know, for their final time? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think you want to try to make y your senior night special. So, you know, for your seniors, the, the big thing is, you know, they would love to go out on a winning note, and especially if you're a senior playing at home in your final game that you're going to play in a, in a gym that you grew up and put up so much time in. So... That's, that's kind of what makes this night a little bit special. So, um, you know, as a coach, you, you feel a little bit of that emotion because those guys, those kids have dedicated so much time to, the, to the, your program. Crawford won the tip but turns it over, and the Lady Rams will get its first possession here just underway between Upper and Crawford. Cadence Isles gets it off to Stowers. She's going to try a three. It's short, out of bounds. And... Possession will go to the Lady Eagles. So right away, upper coming out of the gate, showing a little bit of full court pressure, not a lot of aggressive pressure, just making sure that they match up with Colonel Crawford in the full court here. Gets it back ahead. That is Mallory Plesak. Hands it off, give and go, but it's stolen away by Cadence Isles, two possessions, two turnovers for Colonel Crawford to start. That shot off the mark, no good, and a rebound to Crawford. I mean, you can see the difference a little bit already. Um, upper Sandusky's come down and shot two threes, and Crawford's tried to stick the ball inside but turned it over both times. And, and you can already see that Crawford's showing a lot of patience in their half-court offense. And for a team that, you know, only gives up about less than 30 a game, you know, they probably do slow the ball down a little bit. Stowers good, good, gets the block. Good defense by Sowers there. And Isles, Isles with a great penetration with the right hand and able to finish with contact. So Isles gets the hoop to fall. As we've seen throughout the season with her, she's she's got a good balance of inside outside game. Can can take the ball to the basket off the dribble. Can post up. Also has the ability that she can step out and shoot the three. So she's had a really nice season this year for the Upper Sandusky Rams. So Colonel Crawford looking to get it across, but this defense from Upper Sandusky. Causing turnovers, that's the third against Crawford already. Yeah. 
so so initially they didn't really show you know any kind of trap there and their aisles shows a trap and Crawford throws the ball away good post to post action there between aisles and Stowers but it's turned over and you see that a lot too upper Sandusky trying to force it inside the Stowers well when you have when you have those two post players they they played very well together throughout the season so as a coach, you want to go to that strength, and, and that's one of the strengths that, that Upper has a little bit. And we'll get a foul. So two quick fouls against the Lady Rams. Isles and Swartz, both the seniors, getting called for fouls here in the last 20 seconds. Lady Eagles looking to get on the board here as we go to the 5.30 mark of the opening quarter. Drive inside, layup shot, no good, but we'll get a foul. And two shots coming up. That's Cameron Powers. So you can see offensively, Colonel Crawford trying to go five out and make Sowers and Isles try to defend on the perimeter. And what they're looking to do is try to attack, so Couple possessions ago, Stowers was able to, you know, get a block shot there. Here she gets a block shot, but but also got called for the foul. Correction now is Weithman that got fouled. She drains both, and we're tied two. Lady Rams across the timeline. That's right side to Isles, gets a screen from Stowers and said spins and gets it to Grace Walton. Walton out to Kinley for three. Got the bounce to go. 5-2. Kinley with, with just being a great shot preparation was ready to shoot it on the catch and immediately as she caught it was able to catch it and shoot it. 5-2 Lady Rams. That ball deflected out. It'll stay with Colonel Crawford here with 448 left in the opening quarter. I mean, the big advantage in, in the statistical area is that Upper Sandusky has has three players that can really shoot to three, and Kenley, Newman, and, and Walton. Um, and so Crawford's going to have to do a good job of trying to push those players off a spot, try to force them to take a dribble, um, and not just catch and shoot it from three-point range. Drive to the hole is blocked out of bounds as we take a look at the replay. I mean, again, Crawford really trying to use the dribble to, to attack the basket. And again, Stowers there to kind of, you know, be the presence inside the enforcer to take, take that away from them. That ball deflected out. And again, it'll stay with Colonel Crawford. This upper Sandusky squad, they have six losses, but it's to very quality teams. Two losses to Buckeye Central, uh, a loss to Shelby, a loss to Tiffin Columbia, and, the, and they've been close losses too. They haven't been blown out this season, yeah. and their defense is one of the reasons why. I mean, they're, 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 a, they're a truly a, a tested team through the season. So, you know, especially with how the Northern 10 is this year, um, the balance that that has, those games have all been challenges pretty much. And then they balance that out with a really good non-league schedule, as you mentioned, Shelby and Tiffin Columbia and being two of those teams. Holt. Finally, hands it off to Roston. Finally, they get it inside, but it's backed out by McKibben. Three up in the air, no good. Contact, no call as they push it ahead to Stowers. I mean, was it wasn't necessarily maybe a good shot by McKibben, but it looked like she got hit uh, as she released that three-point. Coach Bauer, you know, letting the officials know that he thought he saw that also. We'll try and get a look at that the next stoppage we can. Take to the hole, layup, no good, but a foul. And here is that play again, coach. And she wasn't given room to come yeah. down and land. And I'm surprised I mean, the, the, that wasn't the one, called the, the one big thing I think it's been an emphasis really at all levels, high school, college, and the professional level is is um, you know allowing a shooter to come down uh, 
and have that space on the floor. So if you're going by that, that, that was probably a foul on that three-pointer. First free throw up and no good by Elise Swartz. Checking into the game for Upper Sandusky, Ellie Ham. But you know, right now, early in this basketball game, as we played almost five minutes, uh, the pace of the game is favoring what Crawford wants to have. You know, uh, uh, extended offensive possessions, more of a defensive game. Um, and I think what Upper would like to do is try to create maybe a little bit more tempo. So it'll be interesting right here again, dead ball situation, uh, to see if they're going to start to trap out of this uh, full court pressure. Misses both. Uh, so it stays 5-2. It looks like they're going to look for a trapping situation here with Isles. Crawford Please. being patient to get it across. Please sack. Barely gets across to Roston. She'll drive it in the lane, kick it left side. Deep three in the air, that's short. Rebound on the ground, and we'll get a travel on Upper Sandusky off the rebound, so it'll stay with Colonel Crawford. 5-2 the score with under three to play here in the opening quarter. Great defense, great defense by Upper Sandusky. Let's and take I, a look at it right here. Just and I'm going to assume that's that's a scouting report. It, you know, I I look at this box set. And that's a that's a set that Winford ran when Coach Bauer played, uh, called Mooney. So I I could see the similarity there. Of, you know, that was a play we always had to work on when we played Winford to be able to defend. And it looks like Upper had that on their scouting <laughs> report also. Got to love when coaches you know use use the stuff that worked when they played. Yeah. <laughs> They had a lot of success with that play over the years with, with Coach Sheldon. Kinley tried forcing it inside and it's turned over. That's a third against Upper Sandusky. And back comes Colonel Crawford. I mean, both, both teams really doing a, a, a good job in their half court defense. Um, not, not very many open looks. Um, and teams have been forced to reverse the basketball uh, to make the defense try to adjust. So. Again, you can see already Crawford playing, showing great patience in their half-court offense. Holt with a bit of a crossover. She'll take it back to the top of the key. Isla McKibben checked in for the Lady Eagles. She has the ball right now on the left side. Pick and roll inside, and we'll get a foul. She gave it off to Nia Shipman, who will go to the line for two. And Scully, who just came into the game, called for her first foul. Bailey Fox comes in, replacing Leah Kinley for the Lady Rams. And Lexi DeRay is in for the Lady Eagles. Eight Lady Rams already into the lineup today. Both free throws missed. I mean, if free throws in a, in a close game are important, whether it's early or late, um, Crawford needs to take advantage of those opportunities when they get them. So Crawford with the ball now. Lexi Durr in for the Lady Eagles. Left side three, just short. Offensive rebound, though. Inside, tried, forced it back. Still has possession. Great. I mean, great defense by Stowers yeah, there. Absolutely. I mean, stopped the penetration, kept her hands straight up, made it difficult for Crawford to try to attempt a shot over the top. Jumper's no good. And Stowers with the, with the rebound. Good defensive possession there by Upper Sandusky. Crawford yet to record a field goal here, but only trailing by three. Right side, three in the air, short. And the Lady Eagles come out with it. I mean, good, good job there of stopping the penetration by Crawford and then a good job of making sure they contested that three. It wasn't a wide open three. Closed out, got a hand up in the shooter's face, and the, and the shot was a little bit short. And we're going to get a moving screen. Lexi DeRay. More substitutions for the Lady Eagles. 
I want to welcome everybody watching live and free this afternoon on the OH Report. Let us know where you're watching from. Give us a shout out. We'll shout you out just like uh, our own Hayden Gray. Let's go Lady Rams. Maybe a win will help put some respect on their country roads rankings. Hayden Lady Ram Gray commenting in there. <laughs> if things play out like they should, it would be a very good matchup mm -hmm. between Upper Sandusky and Clear Fork in the district semifinal. Yeah. But you still got to get there. We talked about yeah. this on your show. I mean, that's why a game like today is important because you want to you want to try to go into that game with a, you know, with some positive momentum, uh, and, and uh, you know, and again, we talked earlier about it being a senior night, so kind of a special a special night here for uh, Upper Sandusky. Shipman at the buzzer, uh, too strong though, and that's how the first quarter is going to end. Defense, it wins championships, yep. and it's well, it's winning it so far for Upper Sandusky. They leave five two after one. You have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let's Ferion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. set there by Coach Bent. Uh, comes right out to start the second half. They struggle to score a little bit. And he goes right inside. The Stowers for a good post move. So now 7-2 the score in this defensive battle thus far. That's Stowers, a nice, nice defense. Straight up blocks another shot. I think that's like her second block shot here uh, of the game today. Yeah, and she... You always love to see that. You get a bucket on one end and goes down and makes a big defensive play. But the Lady Rams turn it over and will give another possession to Crawford. Just underway, second quarter, 7-2 the score. So with, with Crawford, you know, his defense, you know, holding uh, up or down, Upper hasn't been able to really get into their pressure. Now in this dead ball situation, they do a good job of splitting the trap there. That three, too strong, but tough luck there. Hits Stowers before bouncing out, so he'll stay with Colonel Crawford. So again, Crawford in a box it out of bounds. See if they run the same, same look. A little bit different here. Nice move. And this time it's Isles with a block. Quickly to the top of the key. Crosses over, looking for Stowers on the give and go. Instead, we'll hand it off to Leah Kinley. Kenley hands off the Swartz and then back to Grace Walton here. Minute and a half gone by here in the second quarter. Stowers back to Walton. Motion offense here. We really, Rams. really like how Stowers works inside. You know, she sets, comes out, sets ball screens, but usually constantly moving and looking to post up off those uh, ball screens. Grace Walton will reset the offense. And Upper's content with running, a, kind of running a Colonel Crawford type game. But, you know, this, the way I, their think, defense is playing. I think this pace still favors, you know, favors Crawford, though, because, you know, they're making it, making it difficult. But you also take a look is that they have not, you know, Upper is not really four shots. So you got to kind of like that from up, Upper also, that they're not in a panic situation like, hey, I got to get a shot you know, within the first 10 or set, 10, 15 seconds of the possession. 
Isles. Closely guarded by McKibben. Gets it off the Stowers. Looked for that cut underneath the Walton, but it wasn't there. And we're going to get a foul. That's on Weithman, her first. Now, you don't see Addie Newman out there for Upper Sandusky. She, she was injured last week, so out for this game. Hopefully, we'll see her back next week for the sectional final. But Coach Vent, you know, sitting her out in a game like this, you don't – I mean, you'd like to get the win. You'd like to have her out there, but yeah, health the, is more yeah, important yeah, right the, now. Yeah, the win's important, but also, if, you know, you're not playing for a league title or anything. Um, what you're trying to do is, is get your team as healthy as you can for the tournament. So, you know, giving her a little bit of rest here and hopefully, uh, you know, another seven to eight days is that she'll be ready to go in the, and, and be able to play in that uh, sectional final next week. Kinley spins at the elbow. Look to take it up. Instead kicks it out to Stowers. Ball fake into the lane. She ball fake, but we got a moving screen. I mean, you, got, you, got to, you can't help but be impressed with how Colonel Crawford's half-court defense has been. Um, you know, that was that was probably over a minute I think of playing defense. Yeah, um, and they and they finally get a turnover on uh, an illegal screen. Now it'll be interesting here to see if you know uppers showing full court man to man pressure, but they really show that they want to trap here at the half court line. And so now here here comes that trap, knocked out of bounds. Now they called a foul. Oh, they I got believe. a foul. Yeah, yeah. that's going to go against called, Holt. Called, called a blocking foul. But on the other end, you saw with Swartz. She kind of jumped into that screen, and that's why they yeah. called the offensive foul. That's her second, and she had to check out for it. But, you know, we talk about Crawford's half-court defense being impressive. You, you almost have to be just as impressed with how Upper Sandusky's defended in the half-court here. Um, they, they made everything pretty much difficult for Crawford to do here. Yeah, and uh, two of the better defensive teams here, even though Upper Sandusky's given up about 18 10 to 15 points yeah. more than Colonel Crawford. This is a, this is a team that's impressed as well yeah. during the season, but they also have the ability to score points, as we saw in their 69-65 win over a good carry squad. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, upper, Upper's offensive power is, is, is a little bit more. Um, so, so really, though, you, you take a look. We're 4.15 left to go in the half, and, and Crawford still has not scored a field goal. Um, Did but, get a safety though, but but but, but you you give you give uh, you give um, Crawford credit too because Upper's only got seven points right yeah. now. So uh, you know a defensive battle right now. Nice pass inside, layup too strong though. Yeah. Rebound will stay with Upper Sandusky. Isles back out to Walton. Gets it back to Isles with under four to play in the half. Walton into the lane, nearly got the jump ball. Instead, kicks it out to Isles for three, short, knocked out, and it will go to Colonel Crawford. Again, can't say how impressed I am with both teams defensively. They have, they have made things really, really difficult. So what you see here are two teams, number one, that are very well prepared. Coaches have done a great job with their scouting reports, um, and they are not giving up anything that's easy. What was your best defensive team in your many years as coach Ooh. of the Ontario Warriors? <laughs> so that's a lot of years to ask. Uh, <laughs> Any um, pop out? Uh, I can't really think right off the top of my head as, as to how. I, I mean, I, I know the years that we were, we were a really good team as we were really good defensively. And that was, you know, something that we always kind of thought we could be consistent with was if we were a good defensive team, uh, you know, some of the other stuff would take care of it. But. Also know if you have a team that can score points, it can cover up a lot of your defensive deficiencies also. Yeah, kind of like a, a Sandusky boys team that can that averages 78 points. Yeah. Great scoop layup for Lee Kinley. Leah has five. It's you know, nice too. Nice move there, but Crawford also came out a little bit like a one-two-two half-court trap trying to create a turnover because I think what Coach Bauer is seeing is it's really difficult to score against Upper Sandusky in the, in the half-court. So trying to create some situations where maybe he can get a steal and get an easy bucket. McKibben gets off the Shipman. Now right side to Roston. 
2.30 left in the half. Pass inside, layup blocked again oh. by Isles. It's a block party for Upper Sandusky. Isles and Stowers have been a presence inside. And it turns into a Kinley three timeout, Colonel Crawford. It's 12-2. And, that, and that's, what, that's what Upper's looking for is, you know, can we get a turnover, or in this case it's a block shot, and get into transition a little bit quicker, as you saw, spotting up from the three, getting it off the catch in transition, being able to make that three. So quick timeout here by Coach Bowers as it goes 12-2. to two. Big thing as a coach right now is you're trying to keep this game from getting, getting into that double digit. If you're in Coach Vent's huddle, what you're telling is, hey, we got it to 10. Let's see here in the next couple minutes before we end the half if we can maybe get this thing to 15. Well, and once again, welcome everybody watching live and free on the OH Report this afternoon. A little afternoon basketball for you. Jerry Leith, good luck Lady Rams on Facebook. Got some viewers watching this afternoon. And make sure, stick around. Joe and I will be back this evening as Upper Sandusky hosts the Shelby Whippets on the boys' side. And that Shelby team we've seen before, they're a fun team to watch. It's going to be interesting to see how Upper matches up with them yeah. in this non-conference game. And especially Upper coming off of a game last night, you know, they've, they've, they've had a tough season, no doubt about it. But, you know, against a very good carry team, 42, I think, 34 last night. Um, so that could be an interesting matchup tonight as, as uh, the Whippets come here into uh, Ram country to, to match up. Lady Eagles break the trap. That's right side to McKimmon. Back out front as they go through their set with two minutes left in the half. Pick and roll inside, ball fake, puts it up in another, another block. block it's just the, the height inside by Upper yeah. Sandusky has I mean, just caused problems. Isles and Stowers both have done a really good job of just being straight up and, and Crawford trying to put it inside. Uh, they're going to have to maybe you know use a shot fake and use a dribble to see if they can get around him because right now they can't shoot over the top of either one of those players. Right side three. Wow. Leah Kinley, have yourself a half. She has 11. Leah Kinley with three threes here in the first half. It's 15-2. And as we said, one of the advantages that Upper has is their ability of those three perimeter players to, to shoot threes. And Kinley came in you know, with over 35 threes, I think, here for the season. So she's getting close to 40 threes for the season. Nice pick and roll, layup shot in. And finally, Colonel Crawford gets a field goal. You know, that's the one set that Crawford's run that, that they've gotten good looks at. They, they had a good look earlier, and then they also had a good, good look from a three off of that. And again, Crawford coming into a 1-2-2 two, two half-court trap, trying to create some turnovers. <laughs> wow. But Grace Walton from deep. And now the threes are starting to fall for the Lady Rams. But for that Crawford possession, they did it quick in the possession, too. They didn't yeah. let Upper yeah. Sandusky establish themselves in the paint, and it paid off. Yeah, I mean, Upper's, Upper's just making, has made everything difficult for him here. Um, you know, as much as we talked about uh, Colonel Crawford's defense in the half court, Upper's been just as good, or if not better. And the, and the big difference is with Isles and Stowers inside, uh, when they take the ball inside off of the dribble or try to throw it inside in the paint. Um, again, there's another block shot. Isles, I think that's four of them here in the first half. Deep three at the buzzer, short. That'll take us to the half. And Coach Vent's got to be happy at the timeout. It was 12 to two and we said, can we extend that lead? And they've taken that lead to 14 going in the half. We played two quarters here from the mountaintop. Upper Sandusky's got this one in hand now up 18 to four. We'll take a break when we come back. The Burkhart Farm Center halftime right after this break, live and free on the OH Report.
things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let's Ferion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Enough about me. Let's start the show. Starring me. Hop in the car, watch it go vroom, vroom. I told them all that I was soon, soon. No, it's a child back in the womb. Oh, told us to back. I need my broom, broom. Hop in the car, watch it go vroom. I'm in a whip, so I got a zoom. They trying to talk, they not in a room. I've been so real, I'm dead to the tomb. They in the way. They Coffee light on the soy milk and gently stirred. Don't forget the sugar this time either. I'm doing fine. Don't see the vision. They look so blind. I hit my lower. I don't got a time. Cross on my teeth and he died. Today's girls high school basketball broadcast brought to you live and free thanks to our generous sponsors. Chris Darris, Edward Jones Investors, whether you're planning for retirement, saving for college, grandchildren, or just trying to protect the financial future of the ones you care about most, Chris can develop specific strategies to help you achieve your goals. Wilson Tire at Wilson Tire Company, we sell new and used tires and provide tire services to customers in Upper Sandusky. No matter which location you visit, we'll prove that Wilson Tire Company is the best when it comes to tire services and alignment. Burkhart Farm Center, farmers serving farmers. Quest Federal Credit Union, a full service financial institution ready to support you, your family, and your goals. Spherion Mid-Ohio, let us help you build the career you want or the awesome team you want. We build real relationships with you so we can understand what you need and get it for you fast. And Frito-Lay, we are driven and inspired by our purpose, food that matters for life's moments. Thank you all to our sponsors for allowing us to bring you these games live and free right here on the OH Report. We'll take one more break when we come back. The Burkhart Farm Center Halftime Report right here live and free on the OH Report. Yeah. Thank you. 
you have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Enough about me. Let's start the show. Starring me. Hop in the car, watch it go wrong. Wrong. I told a ma that I was soon. Soon. No, it's a child back in the womb. Oh. Told us to back. I need my wrong. Wrong. Hop in the car, watch it go wrong. I'm in a whip, so I got a zoom. They trying to talk, they not in a room. I've been so real, I'm dead to the tomb. They in the way. Coffee light on the soy milk and gently stirred. Don't forget the sugar this time either. I'm doing fine. Don't see the vision. They looking so blind. I hear my lawyer. Don't got a time. Crossing my T's and he dying. Welcome inside the Burkhart Farm Center halftime report for your score at the break 18 to four in favor of the Lady Rams of Upper Sandusky. And coach, you thought this would be a defensive battle with Colonel Crawford, but it's kind of flipped around. It's Upper Sandusky playing defense well today. Yeah, I mean, Upper's been really good in their half-court defense. Uh, and, the, and the thing that you've seen a little bit is when Upper's been able to possessions when they've been able to play a little bit quicker uh, is when they've had success. And most of those have come off of block shots. They really haven't turned Crawford over a lot, but they've gotten some block shots, and then uh, they've had you know their perimeter people step up and make some threes, especially in that last four minutes of the second quarter that have been the difference in the ball game right now. Taking a look at the stats by Burkhart Farm Center, there's not a lot of offensive no. stats here. Eight field goals to one, four threes. Those coming in the second quarter for yep. Upper Sandusky to help pull away so far. Nine to three, the boards. We were asking each other, is the block the rebound off a block considered a rebound, it is. So that's why you have your nine to three. It would be about three, three if it wasn't for that. Uh, turnovers pretty low, fouls the same, foul shooting, but it's been the paint presence by Upper Sandusky defensively, yeah. it's been the difference in this one. Stowers and Isles in the lane have just given Crawford all kinds of problems when they tried to attack the basket or, or put the ball inside on a post up. Um, so, I think what Crawford's going to try to do, and they tried to do a little bit more in the in the second quarter, was they came out in that kind of 1-2-2 two, two half-court trap, trying to maybe create some turnovers and maybe get a little bit quicker possessions. Um, so the first the first three to four minutes of this third quarter are going to be crucial. Um, Crawford's going to have to try to look to get this thing, you know, in single digits. And then I think Coach Event's going to try to get this thing, you know, take it from 14 to maybe 20 points. And now it's a little bit interesting here that uh, – uh, Upper Sandusky comes out in a 1-2-2 two, two with Isles playing at the top. They tried to get a, a screen down low. I mean, they had the ball sack, in a position where they could score, but I think, you know, the, the Crawford's uh, post player there, the presence of Isles or Stowers being around there somewhere was too influenced jumbled. that a little bit. Yeah. 5-2 upper after one, then they outscored Crawford 13-2 in the second for the 18-4 lead. As Crawford needs a couple buckets early on here to establish an offensive drive. game, but they couldn't. They had a great uh, look, just couldn't great, get the fall. Had a great look for it with the layup, but just rolls off the front of the rim. Quickly ahead now to Stowers on the right side, hands it back out to Elise Swartz, the senior. She'll drive it to the hole, kick it left side to Isles. Isles is going to try the three open, in and out, no good. Ball knocked out of bounds, but it will stay. Yeah. With, current, with Upper Sandusky. Some individual scoring for the first half. Not a lot for Crawford. Please sack two, Weithman two. For Upper though, Kinley with 11, Walton with three, Isles and Stowers both with two. And there's your scoring for the first half. And as we mentioned, that second quarter, Upper's perimeter people stepped up and made those four threes, which have been a big difference in the game. Good drive there by Isles. Right down Main Street, she has four. But I believe, I believe on that play, we talked earlier in the game, too, about Stowers 
how her movement inside and her ability to screen makes a difference. And I think that was uh, Stowers setting a ball screen there and Isles coming off of it. Weithman gets it inside, then back out to McKibben. So first possession, uh, Upper Sandusky showed a 1-2-2 two, two zone, and now they're back to their man-to-man. -man. And Crawford got a good look off of it, just couldn't complete yeah. that layup. Inside, forced one up, uh -huh. nothing going, and it's a rebound back out to Upper. Again, Isles, her presence inside, They both they, she did a good job of just staying straight up. That scoop is no good, but it's an offensive board. Out for three off the side iron, and Crawford will finally come down with it. Good job of Upper Sandusky getting back in defensive transition. Weifman lost the handle, so she'll have to kick it back out. Three in the air for Plesak. Air ball, rebound Crawford, or Upper. Swartz into the lane, just threw one up. Charge call, offensive foul. offensive foul. And that's going to be the third on Swartz. But you can, you can see, I think, Coach Venn at the half, emphasize, hey, let's let's get the ball and let's try to push it a little bit quicker than we did in the first half. So the first few possessions here, Upper looking to try to push the ball um, and, and make Crawford get back maybe a little bit quicker and also have an opportunity that Upper maybe can get a little bit quicker shot uh, rather than have to fight, face that stifling uh, half-court defense that Crawford's been able to play. Upper in a 2-1-2 three-quarter court press, but it's broken by Crawford. Three in the air, yes! Yeah. They're going to need that to get back into this. Weithman hits the three. She has five. Weithman breaks the ice there. So now what you want to try to do is build on that possession, see if you can get a defensive stop here and get another score. Back out the aisles. Three minutes gone by, second half, 20-7. to seven. Colonel Crawford trailing upper. That deflected out, but it will stay. So we take a look at the three. And it's it's... Great movement. She was deep yep. in that one, too, but, but she was able to set herself up and had an open but, shot. But the, thing, the, the key thing with those kind of plays is, is just being shot ready, and, and Whiteman was shot ready on that um, and able, able to, to get it off a little bit quicker. And we're going to get a foul on Crawford on the rebound. Take a look. <laughs> eh, looked like it might have been a could have, could have easily been a jump ball there. It'll be Plesak second. Crawford, great job on defending the baseline out of bounds play. Sixth upper Sandusky turnover. Crawford with a chance to make it six in a row, but off the back iron, no good. Yep. And I think we're going to get a foul on yep. upper on the nice hustle. You know, Weisman just hit a three, came back, kind of felt the rhythm, you know, shoots it from deep. Good thing, though, is, is he, he shot it from deep and they had uh, – Two or three girls going for the offensive rebound. We're able to get the rebound and get a foul. So Crawford's got the ball baseline out of bounds here. 20-7 to seven to score. Once again, I want to welcome everybody watching live and free on the OH Report. So it'll be interesting to see Crawford coming out of out of bounds. We've seen him run a, what you know, we used to call Mooney action when Coach Bauer played at Winford, which was kind of screen the screener action. And then they also ran a, a, a out of the same box set they ran where the post player that stepped out caught it and they faked a handoff and they tried to just spin and lay it. So uh, it'd be interesting to see here again. They're in a box set, so we'll see what they do here. Easy entry to please sack in the corner. Uh, they tried to set a double screen for Weithman to come to the top, and Upper did a good job. Stowers stepping out over the double screen to defend Weithman coming off that double. They'll back it out. 4.06 left in the third quarter. Is Crawford trying to get back on the board? Get themselves a run to get back in this. Good ball fake into the hole. Layup shot just off the rim and out. Another you know, tough break yeah. there for Ross. They've had two good, two good layup looks in this quarter, and they just have rolled, both have rolled off the rim. That three attempt on the other end is no good, and back comes Crawford. Holt in the corner once again. She'll slowly back it out, crosses over Isles. 
Double team, kicks it out. Open three for McKibben. Off the back iron, she gets her own rebound though. Holt. The Crawford doing a good job in this quarter, you know, a, a little bit better than they did in the first half of getting the offensive glass and trying to get some second chance scoring opportunities, which is going to be key. You know, Weithman with the post up, good kick out. Now nice they're going to get a layup. Good job there. Good offensive movement. Please sack with four. It's a 5 0 run, 20 to 9. So Eagles are fighting back, trying to get this thing, you know, back to single digits, which would be your goal here before the end of the quarter here in the next two minutes. Walton, right side, kicks it left to Isles. 2.45 left in the third. She takes it down, throws it away, though. So the Lady Eagles now feeling a little bit more comfortable here, especially if they can get a bucket on this possession. There's Please Sack, who just scored, gets it over to Weithman. I mean, good, good defense by Upper there. Um, Crawford, Crawford ran a set where they, they had uh, shooters coming off double screens at two different situations. They defended, but, and then again, there was Isles in making her presence felt defensively. But Grace Walton stops the run after another Isles block. Makes it 23 to nine with two minutes left in the third. And you could see, Travis, that, that Upper's, I think an emphasis to half was, hey, let's play a little bit faster. Let's, if we got an open look, you know, off of one pass or two passes, let's take that um, and not, not fret about, you know, getting so much ball reversal uh, in the half court offense. Holt gets it straight ahead. Coming up on 90 seconds left in the quarter. Nice job here denying the pass, you know, by Leah Kenley, making it difficult for them to get into their offense. Please sack with it, lost the handle, turns it over. You know, they ran a great set there to get the ball inside, but when they turned and looked, both Stowers and Isles are standing there straight up. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, uh, those two have been a presence inside all day. Left side three off the front iron, but there's Stowers with the offensive board. Isles now will try from deep. That's in and out, and a foul on the rebound. It's going to go against Grace Walton, and possession will go back to Colonel Crawford. But I, we saw with the one, the first field goal for Crawford, if they can get it, Get that entry early on before the two bigs can get established. Yeah. That's when they can get their open looks. Because after that, after a couple reversals, it's not going to be there. Yeah. I mean, it, it, as we, we, you know, and uppers guards do a really good job of getting pressure on the ball, and they can they can feel pretty confident to get pressure on the ball because you know you're usually going to have Isles or Stowers standing inside to, you know, be the enforcer there to to, to take away those easy looks. Uh, that, you know, you want to try to get uh, when you run your offense. 30 seconds left in the third. And we're going to get a foul inside. You got to hold and I think foul. it's Finn Scully's third. So now that's the team's fourth of the half. Again, box set. So let's see, see what they run out of this box set there here this time. And this is the time to do it, too, because Stowers and Isles are both out of the game at the moment. Weithman for three. Yes, no foul called as she hits the floor, but she hits the three to make it an 11-point game once again. I mean, good job of coming off of a double screen uh, and being shot ready on the catch. And as you mentioned, Travis, she, she probably also got fouled. Timeout, Upper Sandusky, so it'll give us a chance to look at it. Look bottom right of your corner. We'll see. Yeah. And again, she... Yep. I mean, you I, can't it go either you way. Can't, you can't. You can't really hit a shooter after they they come down to the floor like that. I mean, you're, you know, as a, as a, a defender, you're saying, "Well, I'm checking out." But, but the one the one big emphasis I think in basketball over the last couple of years is doing a better job of trying to protect shooters because you're really unprotected. You know, when you're in the air and coming down on the floor. And she did hit the ground, but still, yep. she wasn't completely established. Right. She'd still need to give them a foot or two or give them at least a second before you get into that box out because they're not yeah. going to be able to go after the ball when they're yeah. still in the air. And that's I mean, what you, you always emphasize when we defended was, you know, when somebody fouled a shooter, they would say, well, coach, we're just checking out. Well, you don't really need to check a shooter. 
because a shooter, as you said, once they hit the floor, they're they're not gonna they're not like they're gonna be a great offensive rebounder in that situation. Isles back into the game now, gets it back out to Walton with 10 seconds left. Yeah, this no. could be a big possession because they also get the possession to start the fourth. Two seconds, one. Walton Great can't job. get it off at the end of the quarter, so Crawford with a little bit of momentum here as we yeah. head into money time, only down 11. You're watching Girls High School Hoops live and free on this Saturday afternoon right here on the OH Report. You have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let's Ferion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. What time is it, Coach? It's money time. Money time <laughs> here on the OH Report. I can't believe I got Coach to say that. It's <laughs> awesome. Anyway, we're going to get a foul on the first possession of the fourth on Crawford. That's Holt. That'll be her second. But this could be a big possession for Upper Sandusky. If they get a bucket here, it really establishes their double-digit lead once again after uh, Crawford had a bit of a run. Really but nice out-of-bounds play there. There it is. Grace Walton now Grace Walton was the inbounder, came off of a, a, of a screen. Uh, by Isles, and uh, Crawford did not do a very good job defending it. Uh, great pass by Stowers to, to get it. So good look, good defense there uh, again by Walton. Um, so she's making a presence felt right here at the start of the fourth quarter, both offensively and defensively. An 8-5 Colonel Crawford quarter had them back to within 11, but that Walton bucket has Upper up by 13 with 7.09 remaining. And now this plays more into Upper Sandusky's game because Crawford likes to slow it down, but down yeah. 13 points, you really Crawford, can't do that. Crawford's going to have to start looking for to get quicker shots here. Inbounds the wife, and she's going to try another deep three, but that one was a little too far out for her as it's off the front of the iron and back to Upper Sandusky. But, you know, for... for in her defense, she's got to start looking to be a more of a scorer yeah. here. Um, and and the defender's hands were down, and she might have been maybe a step further than she wanted to be. but It was on target. Got a, got a good look. Absolutely. Isles, Isles big counted basket. and won. Big basket. Take a look at the replay just easily around the defender. And she will score her sixth point. I mean, the one, the one thing we mentioned about Isles in the pregame was her versatility of that she's a player that can post you up inside. She's a player that can, you know, make an open three, and she's also a player that can put it on the floor and, and finish at the basket. So, uh, you know, all around very good player for the Upper Sandusky Rams. Missed the and one opportunity, and Colonel Crawford gets the ball back down 15. Upper doing a really good job just defending here. Weifman will try a three from the other end. A little bit off, rebound to Upper. Kinley in the lane, scoops it, won't go. Rebound volleyballed around and goes into the hands of Grace Walton. I mean, Kinley likes that little, that little scoop shot. I think I remember from when they played Buckeye Central, she had a couple of those where she drives it and then just scoops it up underneath with her right hand. And that's not an easy shot either. No, something, you, you know, uh, one of the things you, you tell players, uh, especially maybe smaller players, you've got to have moves that you can finish at the basket. So, you know, that's a move that she's probably worked on 
you know, through her career and in the summer to be able to get to the glass and, and finish those plays. Walton to the line. Misses it, but she will go to the line for two. She take a look at the replay. 27-12. That was DeRay's second. As Grace hits her ninth point. Brooke Finscali back into the game. I mean, the strength of both of these teams offensively is their balance. And it's just that upper's balance is, has a little bit higher scoring average uh, th than the balance that Crawford wants to have or has. Holt tried taking it to the hole but lost the handle at the last second. And the drought continues once again for Crawford. They've un been an, unable to score here in the fourth. Hey, there's Isles. Isles kind of taking over here. Uh, that's what you expect from this scene. Yeah. Eight I mean, points for her. Brought it up the floor and then, you know, back, back down inside, made a really nice post move. Now Upper jumps back into this 1-2-2 zone. And we'll, we'll change, get a foul. Change the defenses a little bit just to show Crawford a little bit different look. But Upper's been really, really solid defensively all day here today. You saw the replay. That was a great post move by yeah. Caden. Started dribbling right, pivoted, came back, had yeah. that, just had that opening enough to get around the seal and get in. 30 to 12 the score. Upper Sandusky leading Colonel Crawford. And let's see if I can bring in the tournament bracket for these girls. Both of them will be playing in the D3 Shelby District. You know, the, the good thing, I guess, for, for both of these teams is coming off of this game is they're both going to have time that they can get a little bit of a rest because they're not going to play. They're not playing on whatever Tuesday or Wednesday night. They're both going to play uh, a week from tonight. So, you know, both coaches will make that decision after this game is, you know, are we going to give them any time off? But besides Sunday, maybe give them Monday off or, uh, you know, you come in and, and kind of get refocused. Uh, but you'll have at least a couple days where you can kind of really work on some of the little things you think you need to get better at in the tournament. And then the last part of the week will just be focusing on, you know, who you're going to play in the tournament because they won't know until I think, believe it is, what is the first round is Tuesday? The 18th. They please. won't know until after that is exactly who they're playing. So, you know, Monday and Tuesday, well, they 16th, can really just yeah. kind of focus on themselves. Yeah, the 15th will be Western Reserve Winford as well as be Cyrus Willard. Both those games you can watch live and free on the OH Report. So, you know, Upper Sandusky and Crawford will be watching us to see who they will play. Five minutes left. Baseline out of bounds play there. They tried to get Weithman off of a double, uh, but Upper Sandusky doing a good job of switching out aisles, uh, switching out on Weithman. Uh, she could not get that look. Colonel Crawford, if they are able to win another sectional final, will be the third time that they would meet Margareta, the top seed. Uh, two years ago, lost at the buzzer. They also put up a good fight last season, so... You know, the, the Lady Eagles not afraid to go after the one seed in that side of the bracket. And sometimes that's what you, you want to do in the tournament is you're going to go after somebody you're familiar with and somebody, you know, that uh, they, you know, they haven't had, you know, they haven't won the game, but they had success with them. Stowers gets fouled underneath. You know, the last couple of possessions for upper... The post president of Isles and Stowers has, has, you know, come to life. Uh, you know, Isles with the back down and a post move here. Here a post feed and, and Stowers with a good post move. That's her third point, but that, that's why it's called money time, Coach. You get these seniors, they're making money money moves, money buckets here in the fourth. And, you know, that's why, you, that's why Coach Vent turns to his senior leaders because he knows and yeah. trusts that they can make big buckets down the line. You know, and, and, and Stowers, I think, shoots about 65% from the line, which isn't, which isn't great, but isn't bad either. So you like, you know, being able to put a player like that at the free throw line later in the game. Especially in high school basketball where we yep. see the, I mean, the average is around 50, 55%. So if you're anywhere in the 60s or 70s, that's even great. But then yeah. you do have those 80, 90% free throw shooters that you just love to have, especially in late game situations. Yeah, I mean, the, a long time ago, somebody said if you look at a game, you look at, look at layups, 
um, and free throws. And usually uh, if you made more layups than your opponent, you made more free throws than your opponent, you were going to win games. And a lot of that is true. Lady Eagles almost get the steal there. But they'll hand it back out to Grace Walton. All three seniors in, so with a 20-point lead, we'll be seeing the curtain call here in a minute yeah, or so. I How long did so. you wait until you give, gave your seniors a curtain call? Did you let, let it go uh, down a little bit, or just just depended on the game and you know how you wanted to, how you wanted to recognize them? So it'll be interesting to see if Coach Vent tries to take them out all together, or take them out one by one. Um, but probably we'll make that decision here, you know, pretty soon here when it gets under the three minute mark. We know that, you know, it's an emotional day for the seniors, but also Stowers tried the three and missed. But it's an emotional day for you as a coach too, because this is the last time you get to coach your seniors on your home floor. I mean, yeah. you, you, most of these seniors you've seen for four years as well. So it's not only an emotional day for the seniors, but for the coach as well. Uh, it's, and it's probably more emotional for, for the players and their parents. Uh, you know, we would always have a reception after that last, you know, home game. I mean, the, mo the most emotion you're going to feel is, is when you coach them for the last time when you play your last game, um, you know, in, in the tournament because usually there's only one team in your division that gets that opportunity to, to go off with a win. So, um that, that's always the hardest part to, to let go is, is when it when it's completely over, said and done, and that, that tournament that tournament game is played and you haven't been able to advance any further. And a timeout by Upper Sandusky. But I know uh, a one player, for instance, Griffin Shaver, that's probably, you know, it was his last game. It was also it yeah. turned out to be your last game, but that was probably one of those moments too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in looking back, the, I mean, there were, there were many moments of, you know, when you, when special seniors left, but but probably the toughest moments were when my two sons, you know, ended their oh, careers. Yeah. That, that that was that's just double that, right that, there. That, that, you're the coach yeah. and the, and that, the that was probably the hardest that I ever, you know, that that was ever. But but you know, you what you hope for is as a coach is um, that those seniors, you know, they can leave with some great memories and also maybe some some lessons that they learned that maybe they didn't realize they learned right at the time when they were playing, but when they look back, they. They kind of are thankful for, you know, what, what you as a coach were able to do for them. Well, that's what I, I think Tom Wise is my coach. He was also my guidance counselor at my school. But I do, to this day, after going through four yep. years, I wanted to quit during practice <laughs> my freshman year because it was just, I didn't understand. But he, he convinced me, he said, just stick around, you'll understand. And I, I really thank him yeah. for that because it, I, I learned a lot. Wasn't the great basketball player. Didn't play a lot of varsity time, but just being on that team, you learn some well, the, really good lessons. Yeah, there's so many. There's so many lessons when you're part of a team that you you learn about just hard work and you know fighting through adversity that you can apply to a lot of things you know later in your life. Stowers with the big rebound as Swartz tried to throw up a three. That'll be the sixth and. I think this is, yes it is. Here's the first curtain call as Stowers gets the big offensive rebound. That's how she's going to finish her home career. So two left out there right now. Gets it back out to Walton. Another three in the air, in and out. Another offensive rebound, though, put back no good. They're trying to get Swartz that three yeah. before yeah. she checks out. Trying, trying to get her a good look here to, to finish on a really positive note here, you know, playing here at Upper Sandusky. Three in the air, off the iron, no good. Another offensive rebound for Crawford. As they have their subs in now. Deflected off of upper, across the timeline. And we're going to get a bump on Isles. Uh, Isles might have given that foul just so that they get a chance to get a couple of these other seniors out. I think, I think it's part of it. So and it's for her. It's for her, yeah. She might have saw somebody checking in for her. I was like, I'm going to make this a little bit easier. 
And the final substitution. But you can see both teams are very well coached basketball teams. Coach Vent, Coach Bauer, you know, as even as their subs have come in, they both are, are running offensive stuff. It has it just, you know, become kind of what we would just used to call an open gym situation. So uh, give it an opportunity for some of these younger players to, to, you know, to play here in this game. Three in the air, no good. Rebound the upper. 120 left. Lady Rams going to improve to 16 and 6 as they finish the regular season. Both teams will finish 16 and 6. Which you know those are those are really solid seasons. And now now what you want to try to do is you know create some special moments um, you know if you can get a couple you can make a little bit of that tournament run, you know, you win one or two games in the tournament and it takes takes from what is a a good season to you know, a really good season with a lot more memories, you know, for those those players and especially for your seniors. Ellie Ham now will be shooting free throws. Makes the first. Her first point. So now... Both these teams turn their heads to tournament time. Yep. They get a week as well to prepare, get healthy, and get ready. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, as we said, it uh, you know, be interesting. would be interesting to see, you know, you know, how much time they take off. But, you know, the, as we mentioned earlier, the big thing is you've got a couple of days that you can just really focus on yourself. And then once that game ends, you know, on Tuesday, they really know who they're going to play. And then, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday morning, you've got four full days that you can really focus on what do we have to do to win a sectional title. And, you know, winning a sectional title is really important because for both of these teams, you know, one of their goals I'm sure was to, to, to win a league title, mm -hmm. which is hard to do and especially hard to do in the Northern 10 this year. So now you still have a chance that you can win a win a championship by winning a sectional title in the tournament. You get another date up on that banner. Yep. For a sectional championship, and then give yourself a chance in districts. That'll be a walk on upper. With 19.4 remaining. So Crawford will. Get this across the timeline. We'll see if they attempt one more shot or just. I think Coach Bauer just go. told him told him to hold it here. And that's what they'll do. So that'll do it. Upper Sandusky finishes off the regular season with the 34-12 victory. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk to the three seniors as well as have our Burkhart Farm Center's post-game show. You're watching Girls High School Hoops live and free on a Saturday afternoon on the OH Report. Thank you. 
better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Enough about me. Let's start the show. Starring me. Hop in the car, watch it go vroom. Vroom. I told them all that I blow soon. Soon. No, as a child, back in the womb. Oh. Told them step back, I need my broom. Vroom. Hop in the car, watch it go vroom. I'm in a whip, so I gotta zoom. They trying to talk, they not in a room. I've been so real, I'm dead to the tomb. They in the way. They Coffee light on the soy milk and gently stirred. And don't forget the sugar this time either. I'm doing fine. Don't see the vision, they looking so blind. I hit my lawyer, I don't got a time. Cross on my T's and he dies. Time now for our Quest Federal Credit Union MVPs. It is the three seniors from the Lady Rams combined Swartz, Isles, and Stowers. First, Cadence Isles, who finished today with eight points. Uh, just what's it feel to be able to play your final game here and get a win over a rival? Oh, it feels really good. Um we knew it would be a good game because the first time we played them, we lost over there in overtime. So this was really revenge for us. We were hungry to get that win. And you guys really brought it, especially inside the paint yourself and Valoria. I think you combined for like nine blocks. Just what was the game? Was that the game plan was just to shut things down inside and force them to take outside shots? Yeah, definitely. And they have some pretty good shooters. Got to give them credit for that. But we also took that away pretty good. We did. I mean, we really dug in on the defensive end. and. That's what got us this game. Well, this is the score for the game. Two, two points in the first, two points in the second, eight in the third, zero in the fourth. So Coach Vent probably very happy with your defensive performance today. Definitely. <laughs> um, you get a week off now. You'll play for a sectional championship at Buckeye Central one week from today. Just what do you guys need to work on to get ready and hopefully get another number on that sectional championship banner? Well, we know it's going to be tough. Um, last year was really tough. I wasn't there last year, and I'm excited to be there this year. All right, Cadence, if you would want to look into the camera, give anybody a shout-out, go for it. Shout-out my mom. <laughs> Mama Isles, thank you very much. Thanks, Cadence. If you a handoff, I'll let you pick whoever you want to give it to. And there will be Valoria Stowers, who finishes with four points and part of those nine blocks. Um, uh, first question, same as for Cadence, just uh, defensively, you guys seem to be really shutting things down. What Was that what you were focusing on, was that defense inside the paint? Yes, definitely. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. That's all right. It's all right. You're good. You're fine. Um, 
Just how, how important was it to get a win on senior night, not only for yourself, but for your two fellow seniors it, against Crawford? It was so important because we have all three put in the work. Everyone has put in the work to be where we are right now. And all we can do is just keep going forward and get what we want this season. You guys pulled off quite the upset over uh, Crestview last year in a district semifinal to get to the championship. Now you guys are a higher seed, uh, the number two seed. What's it going to take for you guys not to get upset and to maybe make it back to that district championship game and maybe a rematch with Margareta? Just keep striving, keep practicing hard like we have been, keep talking, and everything will fall in its place. All right, I like that. And uh, over the next week, what do you guys want to work on to get ready for that tournament run? Um, turnovers, pushing the ball, rebounds, talking more. All right, I like it. I like it. Now I'll let you talk one more time if you want to look into the camera and give anybody a shout-out. Go for it. Thank you, my whole family, for coming. And Sarah Reisner, I love you, second mom. All right. Finally, to our third and final senior, Elise Swartz, who played today a pretty darn good game. It was t I, I wanted one of those threes to go I down. Know. It was halfway down. Uh, but just uh, how much fun has it been to be a part of this squad for the last four years and to be able to get some, you know, <laughs> play with these two twin towers down underneath? Well, I actually um, didn't play my junior year, but I'm so really glad that I You're came back. You're happy you came back yes. out then, right? I'm, I do not regret it at all. It's one of the best decisions I've made this year is coming back to basketball. Seems like this has been a family atmosphere for you guys this year. Just how, how, how nice has it been to come back and have, you know, a bunch of sisters on oh, this it's, squad? Oh, it's awesome. We all get along with each other so well, and we, are, we just work really well together. I do got to ask, is there any fun pregame routine that you guys go through? You play music, you dance. What, what, what do you do before the game? Uh, we run laps around the hallways, and, and then we dance in the locker room. Okay. I was going to say, you're really serious. You run laps, but then you get into the dance. You got to get, <laughs> get loose before you start dancing. And sometimes like we sing it. the Star Spangled Banner. Hey, very patriotic. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, what do you think you guys should be working on the next week to get ready for a sectional championship? Um, definitely rebounding offensive and defensive and taking care of the ball. Okay. And lastly, the easiest question I'm going to ask you, if you want to look into the camera, shout, shout somebody out, please. Shout out to both of my grandmas that came today. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Shout out grandmas. Gotta love your grandmas. They're, yes. they're, they're the greatest. <laughs> All right. There we have it. Our Quest Federal Credit Union MVP, Swartz, Isles, and Stowers. Thank you, ladies. Good luck next week. Thank you. All right, we're going to take one more break. When we come back, we'll wrap things up here from Upper Sandusky. You have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. afternoon's girls high school basketball live stream brought to you live and free thanks to our generous sponsors chris darris edward jones investors whether you're planning for retirement saving for college grandchildren or just trying to protect the financial future of the ones you care about most chris can develop specific strategies to help you achieve your goals wilson tire at wilson tire company we sell new and used tires and provide tire services to customers in upper sandusky no matter which location you visit we'll prove that wilson tire company is the best when it comes to tire services and alignment. Burkhart Farm Center, farmers serving farmers. Quest Federal Credit Union, a full service financial institution ready to support you, your family, and your goals. Spherion Mid-Ohio, let us build, help you build the career you want or the awesome team you want. We build real relationships with you so we can understand what you need and get it for you fast. And finally, Frito-Lay, Find a reader.
We are driven and inspired by our purpose, food that matters for life's moments. That one slipped away from me a little bit, Coach. Anyway. That happens. It just happens. Like, just like a turnover. <laughs> <laughs> right? As we welcome you back inside the Burkhart Farm Center post-game show. Where Upper Sandusky pulls away in the second half to knock off Colonel Crawford 34 to 12 here on senior day. And I was asking the girls about it. They they really their game plan was to pack the paint, dominate that, and allow, you know, if they could keep Colonel Crawford from getting hot from beyond the arc, they were gonna be fine, and they did just that. I mean the stats proved proved out. I mean, Crawford came in shooting twenty-eight percent from three and then uh, you know, you, you saw Crawford's initial game plan was they were going to try to attack him inside, but the presence of Isles and, and Stowers inside uh, just kind of eliminated that. And, uh, they just made things really, really difficult for Crawford. And you can see why Uppers had a successful season. Uh, those three young ladies, uh, you know, present themselves extremely well and uh, have a lot of pride in, uh, you know, what Upper Girls Basketball is about. And, uh, you know, they've proven that so far this year and, uh, you know, I, they're both, all three of them looking forward to a tournament run, which they're going to be capable that they could do. And they hold Colonel Crawford to four total field goals, only two threes. 13 to four field goals, five to two from beyond the arc. They had uh, those field, four of those five at least in the first half, hit one in the second half that really pulled away. Out-rebounded 26 to 10, half of those coming from blocks as well. Turnovers were down. Both teams, I think you can work on both 50% from the line. You can work on your free throws yeah. anytime. We say that all yeah. the time. But the, the 13 to 4 field goal advantage, that's the big stat. You know, and, uh, you know, Co Coach Vent and the Upper Sandusky Rams, they've had a, a great season. But you also got to give credit to Coach Bauer and his staff um, with the season that they've had. I think their, fi their final record also is 16 yep, and 6. Both teams. And, and if you compare the two teams, not taking anything really away from Crawford, but Uppers, Uppers a much more uh, talented offensive basketball team than Crawford is. So for Crawford to do what they've done this year, going 16 and six, um, it tells you, you know, how well they played defensively. And if they can just find a couple players that could step up and make some shots in the tournament, you know, their team that's, that's highly capable of making a run also. Absolutely. Let's go over some individual scoring as we wrap things up. First for Colonel Crawford, Weithman finishes with eight, Plesak with four. As for Upper Sandusky, they are led by 11 points, Leah Kenley. Nine points from Grace Walt, eight from Cadence Isles, four from Valoria Stowers, two from Ellie Ham. Score by quarter, 5-2 upper after one. They went on a 13-12 run in the second quarter to go up 18-4 at the half. Crawford outscored upper 8-5 in the third to make it 23-12. But then an 11-0 fourth quarter by upper Sandusky closed things out for your 34-12 score here on senior night. And it's also senior day for athletic director Brad Ehrman. He's retiring after this school year so just a shout out to Brad he's been a great help for us this year allowing us to be here for every boys and girls home game and speaking of that tonight we have Upper Sandusky Shelby it's that's gonna be an intriguing matchup between the two squads both coming off of games last night and just to see what the Rams can do right before tournament time against a very good Shelby team it'll, it'll be a fun game tonight but going back to Brad Ehrman I mean uh, I think he's I think they mentioned his 20 plus years as an AD here um, and that's kind of a thankless job. You, you don't have many people that would want to have to be here on a Saturday afternoon when you finally get to see some sun in February yeah. in Ohio. Uh, that they're going to do the job. And I would think if you went around this area and checked with other ADs, Brad's going to be one of those guys that uh, uh, ADs and, and uh, coaches uh, around this area have a lot of respect for. So congratulations to him and, and give, wishing him best of luck as you know, he retires here at the end of the year. Next up for both of these teams, it's tournament time. One week from today, Crawford will take on the winner of Willard and Western Reserve at Monroeville, while Upper Sandusky will take on it's Winford or Western Reserve. I said Willard. Winford, yep. Western Reserve at Monroeville next Saturday. Maybe a Winford, Colonel Crawford rematch for yep. a third time. We'll see. But for Upper Sandusky, a sectional final against either Willard or Bucyrus at Buckeye Central. You'll see that one live and free next Saturday afternoon but that'll wrap things up here from the mountaintop 
want to thank everybody that helped put things together today. Joshua Banks on camera. All of our sponsors, Chris Darris, Edward Jones Investors, and Wilson Tire, our scoreboard sponsors. Burkhart Farm Center, a pregame, halftime, postgame sponsor. Quest Federal Credit Union, our MVP sponsor. Sirion Mid-Ohio and Frito-Lay, our commercial sponsors. And once again, we want to thank Brad Ehrman and the folks here in the Upper Sandusky Athletic Department for allowing us to bring you every home game for Upper Sandusky boys and girls basketball. And most importantly, we want to thank you, the fans, for watching. Lady Rams knock off Crawford 34 to 12 to finish the season 16 and 6. For Joe Baylog, I'm Travis Ferrari saying so long for a couple hours. We'll see you right back here at Upper Sandusky for the boys versus Shelby at 6.30. But for now, so long.